Bombaloni? But Bombaloni? They're donuts. And they're stuffed with Nutella. You're welcome. Ready to race to you. So, bone bologna, or at least that's what I think the correct pronunciation is. If it's not, I'm sorry. These are essentially Italian stuffed donuts. Sort of like a jelly filled or a cream filled donut. The cool thing about bone bologna is that they can be stuffed with just about anything and they're extremely easy to make. In this case, we're doing Nutella because I'm disgusting. Let me just say something really quick that I just found out. Bone bologna, it basically means bomb or grenade in Italian or something like that. It roughly translates to that, which I find completely hilarious. Some references say that it, it resembles a grenade I don't know if I agree with that. I think it's more leaning towards a caloric bomb. I mean, one of these has to have like 600 calories. We won't talk about that. If you close your eyes while you're eating, then the calories cease to exist because you're not acknowledging them. Never acknowledge negativity in your life. Sometimes you, you just need to eat a donut. We're gonna start with 10 grams or two and a half teaspoons of instant granulated yeast. We're gonna pour that directly into 115 grams or half a cup of lukewarm water. Give that a little stir and just let that sit for about 10 minutes to bloom. You'll know it's ready once it's gotten all frothy and bubbly like this. Once that's done, we're gonna make our dough. You're gonna start with a stand mixer fitted with a dough hook attachment. To that, you're gonna add 255 grams or two cups of all-purpose flour and 255 grams or two cups of bread flour. And you know, I was almost there and then boom, it happened again. Look at that. And then watch this, this is a really classic French cleanup technique, yeah. Then you're gonna add 10 grams or one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt and 107 grams or half a cup of granulated sugar. Turn your mixer on and give it a little stir to make sure everything's thoroughly incorporated. I also use my hand to be extra sure. Now we just need to add the rest of the ingredients for the dough. I like to do this by first cracking all three of my whole eggs into my yeast mixture to make it for easy pouring. With your mixer running on medium low speed, go ahead and pour in your egg and yeast mixture followed by two egg yolks. So that's three whole eggs and two egg yolks that are in there right now. It sounds a little confusing, but you know, you, you get it now. Lastly, 90 grams or a quarter cup plus one tablespoon of softened unsalted butter. Then just continue to mix it on medium low speed until everything becomes incorporated, scraping down the sides of the bowl occasionally. Once you've formed a cohesive dough, increase your mixer speed to medium and let it mix the dough for four minutes or until you get a nice smooth elastic dough. Once that's done, turn off your mixer, remove your dough from the mixer and transfer it to a well-oiled large mixing bowl. Cover that bowl entirely with plastic wrap and allow to rise for two hours in a warm area or until it's two and a half times its original size. And for those of you who might ask, when I say a warm environment, I mean around 78 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, I'm gonna use my fermentation station in order to maintain that consistent warm ambient temperature. Once that's properly risen, generously flour work surface. Using a floured hand, work your dough onto the floured work surface. Gently shape your dough into a rough rectangle. Lightly flour the top of your dough and then using a rolling pin, roll your dough out until it's a half of an inch thick. Use light dustings of flour as needed to prevent the dough from sticking. Using a three inch circular biscuit cutter, punch out as many circles of the dough as you can. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, have a generously floured baking sheet next to you as a landing tray for your finished pieces of dough. And just repeat that process of cutting and transferring dough, cutting and transferring dough, leaving one inch of space in between each circular piece of dough because they're gonna spread a little bit when they're resting. Now that we've got all of our dough rounds, we're gonna cover this rimmed baking sheet with another equally sized rim baking sheet just to cover it so that it doesn't dry out while they're proofing in a warm area for one and a half hours or until they're two and a half times their original size. Again, as for the warm area here, you can absolutely use your oven turned off with just the light on and that'll create enough heat. Now this part is totally optional, but once your dough is fully proofed, you can place it in the refrigerator to chill and firm up a little bit as you're setting up your fry station. That way the dough is a little easier to handle when you're frying the donut. Totally optional though. Next you're gonna want a deep heavy bottom pot fitted with a candy thermometer or a fry oil thermometer. These are super cheap and you can get them at the grocery store for like five bucks. I really recommend getting one. Next you're gonna fill that pot with about three and a half inches of high smoke point oil. This can be vegetable oil, avocado oil, whatever you want. It could even
even be animal fat like lard. I actually like to use lard, but I didn't have any on hand and I was kind of in a hurry. Now you're gonna go ahead and heat that oil up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna wanna maintain that temperature as consistently as possible while frying. You don't really want to go above or below that. Just try and keep it at 350. Now to set up our fry station. So as you can see to your left, I have a sheet tray with a wire rack on top of it. And then I'm going to place paper towels on top of that wire rack. This is basically going to act as a landing and draining spot for your finished fried donuts. And I also have a wire frying spider, but you could also use a metal slotted spoon. Using a spatula to gently lift the dough masses off of the sheet tray, you're going to carefully lay your donuts two or three at a time into the fry oil at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're simply just going to let them float there and fry for two to three minutes or until they're golden brown on that side. Then gently flip them and fry them on the opposite side for another two to three minutes or until that side is golden brown as well. Then simply transfer them to your landing zone to let them drain and cool. Once that batch of donuts has had a few seconds to drain a little bit, you're going to want to toss them in granulated sugar. But wait, make sure that you're tossing them in the sugar while they're still warm or hot. That way the sugar sticks. Then all you got to do is repeat that process with all of your remaining donut rounds and you're done. Well, you're almost done. Now we gotta fill the donuts. So this part's really easy. All you need to do is using a chopstick or a wooden skewer, poke a hole in the side about halfway deep into the donut and sort of jostle it around to create a little extra room for the filling. Make sure that you're not poking out any other parts of the side or you're not poking too deep. Once you've done that, insert a Nutella filled piping bag fitted with a nozzle and fill your donuts with the desired amount of filling. Now you'll know that there's enough when it starts to push your piping bag out of the donut as you're filling it. Then just repeat that process with all of your donuts. And that's pretty much it. We've made it. You have Nutella stuffed donuts, assuming that you made this recipe. So without further ado, please enjoy this. guys and that is it bomboloni or bomboloni still not sure how it's pronounced but i sure do know how to make it there are a lot of donuts left over which i'm definitely not going to eat all of them that was a one and done with these donuts they are very rich might i recommend bringing it to a party or to friends or to family but either way if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe and i will see you next week yeah.